This video is kindly sponsored by MPB. Muddy pathways, dull skies, and bare colourless trees. Winter forest photography couldn't seem any less inspiring, but if you give it a chance, you may find an image or two. Or not, I suppose we'll just have to see how this goes. I stumbled across this part of the woods in my last video when I was photographing the foggy conditions and I paused here momentarily because I was drawn to this space and I didn't know why. I think I took one bit of b-roll and then just moved on to a location that I knew that I wanted to photograph in those foggy conditions. But this area has stuck in my mind since and I'm not entirely sure why. So we're going to figure that out today. Now it could just be that this area feels very different to all the other bits of forest around here. We've got mossy forest that way and that way. We've got beech trees, I think, sort of that way. This area feels very wild. It's very overgrown. You can tell that humans don't come through it here. Often there are no main trails here. Any trails that I can see are very sporadic. They don't really match up and they look very animal made to me. A lot of boar prints in here. Um, so I'm not going to sort of go too far in and up because uh, I don't want to disturb any wildlife. But you can tell that people have been through here at some point because there are broken bits of brick absolutely everywhere, scattered all over in the mud. So this was definitely used at some point. So I get this sense of this space being very overlooked and forgotten. And I love exploring and the challenge of photographing those places, everyday places that you would walk past while walking your dog and not really give a second glance to. Because there's magic everywhere if you take the time to stop and look for it. We're looking down this trail for our first shot, this narrow muddy pathway that leads your eye into the scene and into the image where you are greeted with all of these trees that are spaced apart quite nicely. I really like the tones in this image, sort of yellows, earthy colours. We've got some nice brown ferns in the bottom right of this shot. I love a good leading line in an image because it gives you a sense of going somewhere, of movement, of exploring and in my mind this space has transformed from somewhere that feels forgotten and abandoned to excitement and adventure where does this trail go and if we can get a bit of sunlight a bit of golden light it would warm this space as well and make this space feel so much more open and welcoming but let me know what you think would you walk this trail would you explore this area or would you not give it a second glance uh, let me know in the comment section down below <laughs> and uh, I'll show you the image now <laughs> if we can get some sunlight it seems to have gone in typically so we'll see <laughs> I've gone trudging up to the opposite bank where from here, instead of looking down at that pathway, we are now looking up at it. <laughs> and I'm very interested to know which viewpoint you prefer. And I think there's a nice image to have here as well. Now, when I go vertical and add these three trees into the left, I've got too much space at the top and bottom uh, for one, which I would probably crop in post-processing. And I don't think those three trees really add anything to the image. Actually, I think they sort of distract you from the main subject where I want your eye to be drawn, which is this pathway. So what I'm gonna do 
is I'm actually going to crop in close and go for a square crop and I'm going to do it in camera. Eliminate those trees because they're not necessary and I do this often with my images where I automatically go wide because I want to get everything in frame because I love how everything looks but sometimes less is more. With a square crop and zooming in a bit closer we still have some trees in the foreground which adds depth we've got layers those trees we've then got that pathway and then we have a sense of location behind where you can see how these trees and this forest just continues off into the background i think it's important to play around with your framing and your compositions on location where possible i have very overcast conditions right now so i'm not having to work fast with light so I can take the time to tinker with the scene. Usually a lot of the time, the first composition that you go to isn't necessarily always the best. And I'm very guilty of automatically going wide and just putting everything in there. Um, but a lot of the time, not everything needs to go in there. So <laughs> I want to be conscious of my photography this year in that sense where, um, I'm just a bit more mindful about my framing and maybe I work with more intimate scenes uh, rather than just going wide all, all the time. Anybody else who films on YouTube outside, do you, com do you spend like half of your time waiting for airplanes to go over? Because I swear that's my life. <laughs> I was certain about a tighter square crop on location, but because of the lack of light and atmosphere, I now prefer the wider shot because there's a bit more to look at. Unfortunately, the sun had really disappeared, and I think these scenes could have a lot of potential in better conditions. I think I found a third image, but I wasn't sure, so I'm leaving it for now. Um, but maybe... I don't know, should I take it anyway, just in case? Fine, I'll take it anyway. Let's go back and do it. Okay, so these are the trees here, starting with this big one, and then you go, you go up the bank, up the hill, and you've got them all sort of lining up as you go. I'm gonna ex explain what my brain is thinking here, and it, it's not gonna make sense. I don't know how my brain goes from A to B. I, I can't tell you. Um, have you ever been in a queue, a line of people, and there's just one person at the front? taking up like space and time they're taking a really long time and so you're looking around and then you look behind you to see what the rest of the queue is doing and everybody's just standing there looking at that one person who is just taking up all the time and space and they're going that's what that reminds me of that is what that reminds me of We're going for a tight square crop again to eliminate any distractions or unnecessary elements, just focusing on these tree trunks. Now the reason why I'm uncertain about it is because I feel as though the trunk that is closest to the camera on the right causes the image to be off balance, sort of right heavy, but I'm also intrigued by this shot as well. So I think it's one of those take it home and then sort of mull over it sort of shots but I'm interested to know what you think is it off balance do you think it's intriguing do you see a queue of people <laughs> standing on a hill or is it just me
Although the light is flat, you can see the idea I had for the composition here. As I was packing away, there was some fleeting sunlight, so I managed a very quick, low quality and slightly blurry phone image. Here you can see how some light would lift the tree trunks from the ferns and brambles in the background, creating some depth to the image. It's just a really big shame that I didn't manage to catch it with the DSLR today. Speaking of DSLRs, have you noticed the uh, rather large difference in my camera bag today? Do not worry, do not panic. The D750 has not been replaced. It has not been shelved. It is just at home today. And I do have a 850 in my bag instead. And I'm gonna explain why for anybody who is interested. A few months ago, I took my D750 for a swim in a Monmouth Shear River, and I have to say it doesn't swim very well. It didn't swim very well at all. And so I luckily had insurance, so I popped in an insurance claim and a few of you asked for updates along the way. And I kept saying, yeah, it's almost sorted. It's almost sorted. It took a really long time. Any time that I thought it was sorted, another delay came in and um, just extended that wait period, which was really quite frustrating. So in the meantime, I purchased a used D750 body out of my own pocket, but eventually I did get a um, payout that would cover a new body so I then had to decide do I put the money back in the bank and use that to cover the cost that I had already paid out or do I use that to purchase a second camera body that could be used as a spare and a backup for any future mishaps because let's be honest it's me I'm incredibly clumsy and a little more accident prone than the average person by uh by the looks of it and thus the great debate began as to which camera body I should buy. Now, I love the D750, you all know that, but I didn't see any point in having two of them, duplicates in my camera bag. Um, so naturally I took a look at the 780 and I personally didn't think that there were enough additional specs or features between the 750 and the 780 to justify that upgrade, especially when a used good condition 850 wasn't that much more expensive than a used good condition 780. I mean, it, there was a price difference, but it wasn't as big as I expected it to be. It was more like that rather than like that, you know? So then I thought about for a while whether I really needed 45 megapixels. Um, and in the end, I just decided just just buy one just do it the insurance money covers it so insurance money has been spent and now i have a 850 in my possession a quick note on today's sponsor mpb the largest reseller of photo and video kit i have used mpb a few times over the past year i know that a few of you have as well not only to buy but also to sell kit and what i love about mpb is how accessible their catalog is it's incredibly easy to find used kit to add to your camera bag, whether you're getting ready for a trip or just wanting to experiment with new equipment. Not only that, but if your camera bag is getting a bit cluttered, then MPB will buy your kit from you. The quotes are instant, it's very, very easy to use, and I'd say the quote system is very fair as well as it is based off the condition of whatever it is that you're selling or trading in. Passing your unused kit to somebody else who can utilize it creates a circular economy. You are keeping usable tech out of landfills and extending the life of the cameras that are already out there. If the kit that you want is not on MPB, you can create an alert and you will be notified when it is available. I'll leave a link in the description below for you to go and check out if you're looking to buy, sell or trade in your video kit or film kit, video kit. Photo kit, that's the word. <laughs> Unfortunately, the day was cut off by some dark and nasty weather rolling through. But here I am, sprinting back to the car. So, thanks for watching, and here's a preview of our next video.